to practice. School, however, has other plans for me. I end up placing a notebook in my lap under my desk at the beginning of each period so nobody can see. Then I slide my hands on top of it and practice slapping out double stroke rolls with my palms. I haven't gotten any easier since that first lesson. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. I keep messing it up over and over again. And halfway through math, I swear I'll never improve. Sam, Mr. Warner says, it's hard to follow along when you don't have your slate out like everyone else. I get my dry erase board and marker out and half-heartedly try to solve the equations on the board. But my left hand keeps returning to the notebook in my lap and quietly tapping left, 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 left creating half of the double stroke roll. Will you stop it, Sam? Danny Lennox says. I make a nasty face at him before stopping. But ten seconds later, my hand goes back to the notebook and starts playing again. It's like an automatic reaction. I get a loud shh from the girl next to me, and I stop again. Even Scott gives me this silent, scared look like he's hoping I'll stop, but is afraid I won't. I glance across the room and see Kristen holding up her dry erase board while Mr. Warner is looking in the other direction. There's a message on it in bold capital letters. Too much sugar? I check to make sure Mr. Warner isn't looking my way and write, no, I have rabies. When I hold it up for Kristen to see, she clamps her hands over her mouth to keep from laughing out loud. Danny sees this and says, geez, you're annoying. Is there a problem, Danny? Mr. Warner says. I expect the bomb to drop right there, that Danny will let out both me and Kristen. He must be intimidated by Mr. Warner's angry glare because he doesn't say anything and the class goes back to normal. It's not until the end of math that we start working independently on an extension of the lesson. I'm halfway through reading the directions when Mr. Warner calls me up to speak with him. I slide my notebook back into my desk and walk up to him. He leaves a math test we took a couple days ago in front of me and says, I was crazy what you thought of this. I look at the test and the big angry red D at the top. I'm not that surprised. I had expected a C and hoped for a B. Getting a D is pretty bad though, even for me. I don't know, I say. Did you try your hardest? Yes, I say, but the word no is repeating over and over in my head. Then what do you think happened? Maybe I was distracted. By what? Something in class? Something at home? All of the above. Mr. Warner nods, like he's carefully considering his next words. But a lot of things are bothering me. I focus on something I enjoy. What do you enjoy, Sam? An easy question. I wish every question in math was this simple. Well, I started drum lessons, and I want to work really hard at them. That's great. Are you enjoying them? I look at Mr. Warner and see real joy in his face. He's not just humoring me. He likes the idea of me playing drums. Everyone else thinks it's weird, but not Mr. Warner, who has never been on my side until now. I am, I say. It's just really hard. Harder than math, he asks? I shrug. In some ways, I guess. But you're working as hard as you can at drums, while you're not working as hard as you can in my class. Aha, I think. That's where he was going with this. I should have known. It's nothing personal, I say. Drums are really important to me. They should be. He puts my math test back in a pile of papers in his desk. Let me ask you a question. What would you do if you had to play drums for your least favorite band? What does that mean, I ask. It means exactly what I said. I just, I think about it for a second. It's not a bad question, exactly. Just weird. But it does get me thinking. I join another band. And what if that's not an option? Why isn't it an option? Because another band wants to see how well you play before they let you join. They want to hire someone who's well-rounded, someone who dedicates to a task when asked, most more than the other 20 drummers in line to audition, and can play many different styles of music instead of just one. And I have to play with my least favorite band to prove that I know a lot? He nods. Then I rock my least favorite band senseless, and then tell them to get lost and join the better band. Would you do your best for the crappy band? The word crappy throws me off. It's weird to hear a teacher say that. It's not really a bad word, but it, gets, but it kind of sounds like Depending on where you say it, or who you're talking to, it definitely sounds like a bad word coming out of Mr. Warner's mouth. Yeah, I do my best, I say. So I thought I actually do the same thing for Matt, and that would be a reasonable request, correct? As much as I hate to admit it, he definitely backed me to a corner. Yeah, that would be reasonable. Alright then, from this point on, you are free to get whatever grade you wish in that. The only thing I ask is that you try your best to rock math class senseless. I shrug. Don't take it the wrong way, Mr. Warner, but I don't think anyone can rock out in math. We need to go home and do a web search on math rock.
Mr. Warner stands up. The bell is about to ring. Enjoy the rest of your days, Anne. Band has been awkward ever since Scott told me I was the worst percussionist in the band. Zeke still talks to both of us, but Scott and I only look at each other when Zeke is asking us both a question. I'm mad at Scott, and how am I supposed to talk to him when his comment seems like an elephant between us? It's not like Scott's apologizing anyway. Miss Rinaldi tells the band to prep the next song. Scott and I dual snare drums, so we're forced to stand next to each other. Stand to, so we're forced to stand next to each other. In a comfortable silence between us, we both pound through the song, our eyes glued to the sheet music. I catch Scott looking my way a few times, but his rhythm gets sloppy with each distraction. He returns his attention to the sheet. When the song is over, he looks at me and says, You're holding the sticks differently. I look down at my hands and then at his. He's gripping his sticks in the second novel. Pete would hate that. I started private, I started private lessons, I said. Cool. It sounds better when you play that way. I'm about to thank him when the bell rings, signaling the end of band and the school day. I put my sticks away and grab my bag. My hands fiddle through the front pocket of my bag and dig out a pen. I uncap it and write, keep working on grip, on my left palm. The students are falling out the door when I hear the tail end of a conversation behind me. She on her notebook all day and she's not even good. I recognize Danny's voice right away, but I don't turn around. Keep walking, Sam. It doesn't matter. This whole band stinks, Danny says. I can't believe I've been stuck in here all year. I know more than anybody in here. Yeah, I guess, the boy next to him says, another sax player. I'm easily the best brass player here. Not that that's saying much. Something about his last comment sets me off. I can take him making fun of me. I've listened to that all year. Ripping on the entire band, however, is not cool. Not Miss Rinaldi's band. Not my band. Even if we are just a middle school band. You're not a brass player, I say. Danny scoffs. What did you say? I said you're not a brass player. The drummer with no rhythm thinks she suddenly knows everything. What do you know about it, garbage can girl? I reach for the pen I used to write my I used for the pen I used to write the note on my palm. I so badly want to fling it at his forehead. My my fingers clench around it, but I take a few deep breaths and calm myself. No more getting in trouble, not for Dean. But that doesn't mean I can't put him in his place another way. More than you apparently, I say, this time turning around and looking him in the eye. Saxophones are made of brass, loser, he shouts. The volume of his voice causes the hallway to go quiet. Danny's warping a smile and accompanying laugh meant to hurt my feelings. That makes saxophones a brass instrument. Saxophones have a little something called a reed, I say. And that reed is made of wood. That makes them wood wings. But I guess you wouldn't know that, considering you're easily the best brass player here. His smile disappears. He looks at his fellow sax player who says, Dude, she's kind of bright. Danny's face turns a few shades of red before he says, Whatever. I've been practicing on your garbage can tonight. He storms down the hall. For once, he doesn't look back to make a mocking face. Scott makes his way through the scattering students and touches me on the shoulder. That was amazing. I smile back at him. That's what friends are supposed to do. I'm angry at him, but he's still my friend. It's funny, though. I don't feel amazing about getting the best of Danny for once. I just feel bad for him. 